busy. Right. All right. So the song two. Um, please, please explain that. Hell, I'm trying to remember. That's a damn shame. <laughs> but we together, we two freaks. It right. just like you know, a couple people come to me. They think that I'm talking from a different person's perspective. So. I guess that's one of those songs where you can take it as you don't know if I'm talking or if I'm talking about somebody else. I don't know. But for me writing it, it was just really talking about being intimate with somebody and just being freaky. But again, that's one of my ways of trying to show people how I can write and kind of write more sensual than just being nasty. So. That's really what I was trying to prove with that song. And I was also trying to flow on that song. And um, that's why it's one of my favorite songs, just because, to me, I like the way I put my words together. No, your, your wordplay is, um, your wordplay, that's why I said call you an MC, not a, not a rapper. There's a difference. And you have MC of, uh, you have MC totality in you. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say capability. You have totality in you. You know, from um, your, your metaphors to your similes to your stories and so on and so forth. If we're speaking the difference between rappers and MCs. You know, if they are apples and oranges. Um, now, your favorite song of mine is your last song. Oh, Lord. really? <laughs> A lot of people like that song. Um, it's poetic. It's real. It is true. Um, and and it just is. And and I want to say in any climate. Of course, we can say in this climate because you dropped this project. I want to say late last year. Right, December seventh. I dropped it on my birthday. All right, my homeboy. Do remember having his birthday. Um, December 7th. Um, okay. Fair enough. Um, you dropped it on your birthday. That's good money. Um, but that song is forever relevant. That's one of them kind of songs, you know, um, that, that, that would, it could never die because it's, it's just that real. It's that authentic. It is that, has that much purpose and that much power behind the message. In it. Right. I agree. That's why I named it Moments. I felt like everybody could relate to it. And what made it special was my brother was singing on it. And whenever I get with my brother, that just make it feel even more like home. You know, we just have a natural harmony when we when we do music together. So I was happy to have him on that track. And I basically just was preaching to people at the end about what's really important in life. Um, in the first verse, I was just basically give, giving them a little intro about where I'm from. And just saying how life used to be. And just, I think you could feel like the essence of uh, just the simple life and all of us being together and, and being one and just having love. And the chorus is just thinking about, you know, when you know better, you do better. Absolutely. If, if, if you could go back to those moments where you change anything, and it's also telling you to appreciate those moments that you have right now. Because they're they are jewels, you know. My mom always stressed to me that, uh, you know, keep your memories with you. You know, make good memories. So that's what's gonna hold you when you get older. That's what's gonna hold you when you get older. I cannot agree more. Um, all of our moments, all of our experiences, that make us who we are. Right. You know. Um, and. I, you know that song is is it, it was was relevant or would have been relevant twenty thirty years ago, and is absolutely relevant today. Um, your poetry that made me want to ask you this: Did you? Uh, thank you, Dolly. Thank you, Dolly. Um, I'm gonna mess your name up, Larue. Happy Father's Day! Thank you so much, sweetheart. Um, um, I gotta get back with you, Dolly, and, and do another interview because I had technical difficulty. That was a sidebar. But get <laughs> um, what's up, Tiff? Tiffany, thank you. Thank you for the happy Father's Day. Um, damn, what was I about to say? But it's still relevant to this day. You know what I mean? Um, the message in it, it is, it's, it's one of those songs. It's, you know, it's your own, the moments. You know, if I had to compare it, if nobody ever heard it, 
if I had to compare it to anything, it would be like Tupac Changes. Mm -hmm. You know, just for the relevancy of the message in the song. And it also made me wonder, wonder, like before you were actually writing rhymes, were you writing poetry or did they coincide? Yeah, they, they coincided. I did write poetry for a while. Um, and I was pretty good at writing poetry. Um, and you, you know, like, poetry is like the beginning of hip-hop anyway, so it's just like hip-hop without music. <laughs> and, um, you know, remember when uh, Death Poetry Jam was really popular? Absolutely. Um, I, I, would, I would travel a lot of the times with my friend Sean, who was um, in this live. Uh, and that's one thing I want to say. One of my friends that I, I keep talking about, Sean, he was he was pivotal in my life, too, because he was older than me, but he was always respectful. He would come pick me up. He would take me to music events when I was young. He would take me to the Apache Cafe in Atlanta. Um, it was a bunch of poet poets there. I don't know if you remember a guy named Tommy Bottoms. He was on Death Poetry Jam. Mm -hmm. A lot of them would come to the Apache Cafe. Okay. They would get on stage. So. I was able to see these real performers, and it inspired me. So, yeah, thank you. You made me remember that. I did used to write some poetry, man. I used to do I'm, that. That second, I don't know if I want to call it a second verse, possibly. It was, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't, you weren't really rapping it. You know what I right. mean? You were just talking it. Right. You know, um, and that, that shit was bone chilling to me. Like, whoo, shit. She, she, yeah, she talking that real shit. And it, it hey. also reminded me of, would have reminded me of, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, what's your name that, that did a couple joints on Outcast? Big Rude. It, re, it reminded me, he did, a, he did, a, damn, what was that shit? <sighs> well, okay. I so, wish I could help you, but I don't remember. Um, hold on, hold on. It was on, on, on Sporty Audi Dope Delicious. I know you know that song. Sporty Which one? Outcast, Sporty, Audi, Dope, Delicious. I don't remember. That's okay. I remember that album. Um, the Sporty, Audi, Dope, Delicious. Um, Big Rube, man. I mean, he he did some other things on some a couple of the other albums, but you know, just the way you put it together and the, what it sounded like and what it was 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 that for me. Like just for people that don't know, just in comparison. That's why I'm only I don't like to compare, but just try try to make people if they know about that. What you did was comparable to that to me and your own artistry. You know what's crazy? And uh, I actually heard the rapper Logic, which a lot of people, they go back and forth whether they think he can rap or not. I mean, a lot of the songs I heard from him, I think, are dope. But I actually got that part from listening to him. Um, okay. I don't know what track. I don't listen to him a lot, but I just happened to see a performance of him. And he was just speaking. And I was like, I want to just speak on a track. So that's what made me want to just speak on it and it's funny because somebody who was, um, you know, helping me, you know, with my music, they were like, I don't think you should put that in there. And it was like, what is that? And I'm like, that shit worked to me. That shit worked. And I left it. So that's just another part of artistry. Sometimes you just got to go with your own feeling, you know? As a as hip hop's biggest fan, I'm <laughs> hip hop's biggest fan because I'm a fan of hip hop in totality. Mm -hmm. Even things that I may not like. I'm not, I don't want to disrespect it because somebody's going to like it. Just because it's not for me don't mean it's, you know, it's not for whoever else. But trusting yourself as an artist and your artistry, and, you know, this when it comes to people uh, having um, creative control, you know, you listen to people's opinions and ideas, but for your own music, your own project, you know what you want to convey. You right. Know what you want to say. And at the end of the day, that's all that really fucking matters as an artist. Right. And I'm saying this from somebody that used to record music. Mm hmm And, you know, uh, shout out um, Money MP, Atlantic City. Happy Father's Day to you too, bro. You know, I, I don't mean to jump on some other shit, but, you know. Oh, no, I love that. Shout out to all the people that join us. That's nothing but love. Absolutely. Um, You know, so... There's nothing more important than, than creative control, in my opinion, as an artist. And I would even say, even what, what I'm doing, what, what you're doing, how we're doing this right now, creative control. You know, come on, <laughs> like, absolutely. Don't don't um, 
Uh, what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? What's the word? I hate when words escape me because I know mm -hmm. that brain. But you know, just don't don't try to block me. Don't try to hold me back. You know, don't try to hold me back and tell me, uh, you know, okay, I, I respect your opinion that this is something that you're not feeling. But for what I'm doing, and this is me, I put my money up. I'm putting my time, my energy, my effort, things I will never get back. Right. I I I I want to give this to the world. And yeah. The I put moments as the last song because I want to leave people with inspiration and motivation and just a good feeling. And then it's going to tie in good with Care Dangerous 2 because that album that'll be coming out is it's more like the song Moments. It's more kind of deep song, more poetic kind of song, and I can't wait for y'all to hear that. When is that coming up? You know what? I don't know because I may be trying to it is finished, but then I'm thinking maybe I should do some more work on it. I'm thinking maybe I should wait the quarantine. Because I still want to do some more videos for this first project. You know, everything been kind of on hold a little bit. Right. I just want y'all to know I do got more heat, though, so don't worry about that. All right. <laughs> and definitely, definitely got some more shit to show. Because, like I said, I call myself a versatile artist. So you're going to be hearing some different kind of tunes. You, you're not going to be hearing the same thing. Okay. Um now I just have some random hip hop or hip hop biggest fan questions for you. Shoot. I'm trying to figure out which one I want to ask you first. I'm gonna ask you this one first before I forget it. This is a question I stole from um well, I'm borrowing, however we wanna put it, from the uh what's the podcast? It even come on YouTube with um um damn all all the smoke. With Steven Jackson, who robbed for George Floyd, he called him his twin. Um, and um, why well, I can't remember your name? Light skin yo with the with the good hair and shit. Um, Wait, what you trying to bring up? He, he played basketball. Um, why well, I can't remember his name? Oh, talking about from L.A. Yeah, um, you talking um the one who had the mom on the uh, basketball show. I know you somebody. He played for the he played for the Clippers. He played for a gang of teams. Yeah, um, shoot. I don't remember his name, but all right, it's okay. I can't it'll, remember either right now. It comes to me probably in the middle of this question. <laughs> um, if you could have a dinner with five people, dead or alive, who would you invite to that dinner? Who? That's crazy. Conversation, great food, information, knowledge, stories, all of those kind of things. I heard him say this shit. Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes. Oh, Matt Barnes, Matt Barnes yeah. Stephen Jackson got all the smoke. I'm stealing this question from y'all because I was like, yo, this is a dope question. Oh, my God. I got to eat. So who would be the five people that you would invite to a dinner, a dinner party, whatever, and y'all can have great conversation, great food, intellect, um, knowledge, and wisdom spread? Well, just to make a personal thing, the first person, I lost my best friend, my childhood best friend last year in March. So I'm so I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that's the first death that really hit me in a different kind of way uh, besides my cousin when I was little. So I would invite him because I just got some questions for him. I want to hug him and I want to I want to scream at him. <laughs> what's his name? He going to feel our, he going to feel our energy somewhere. We gonna, what's his name? His name is Simone. Simone? Yeah. Rest in power. You, bro. That's right. Rest in power. Rest in peace. Um, so I would invite him. Damn. It's so many damn people, man. You got four more. That's Say one. That probably would talk to Michael Max. Who? Michael Max. Yeah. Because um, I respect him. And I know he was kind of changing some of his thoughts before he died, just like Martin Luther King. And I want to hear from him to see where where he think everything is. And um, I know he probably be like, we ain't really got that much further. But <laughs> uh, so he would be one. Shoot, you got three more. I know this is crazy, and people gonna be like, oh, but I don't know why. But I love Selena. I would <laughs> I would bring Selena back. Okay. Because I feel like did. It's not too many people that was Latino who was like doing it like her. She was uh, 
what was it, Taino? I'm going to say the kind of music she's doing wrong, but that music that she was doing has basically gone out of style. And she was the only one really keeping it alive. So I would bring her back. And, um, you know, I have questions about would J-Lo even be big if she was still alive? You know, she opened the door for so many people. And I would just, and she died so young. She was so beautiful, so charismatic. I would want to speak with her. Um, and then, let's see. You got two How more. Many three. That's three. You got two more. I want to talk to the person that sold us into slavery, whoever that is. I want to... Is that too deep? Yo, no, it's not. Is the video frozen? I want to be like, what the... Well, you, I want to know what really happened. I want to know how it did it really go down like that. Was did they really tell us the truth? I, I want to know that shit. <laughs> I won't raise my hand and I'm gonna say this. I don't know how true it is because uh, our history that we've been taught here in America, especially as black people, have been right. lies, even right now. It's a gang of lies. But I was watching a documentary that was talking about Christopher Columbus. Now he may have not touched you know, exactly here, but he touched on like the, the West Indies, the Caribbean, things like right. that. I think I seen something where they said he went back to Spain. Was it Spain? I think his motherfucker was from whatever it was. Yeah. Like they would make great slaves. Like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> but, you know, fuck Christopher for Columbus. I'm just saying. Right. Fuck him. But, I ain't never like him. Okay. So, all right. That's four. But I, I, I want to go back and ask one of them what the fuck they were thinking. I, I can respect what you're saying. Shout out. What's up? Oh, I'm sorry. What's up, Cuzzo? What's up, Nasty Boy? <laughs> hey, I love you. I love you, my nigga. Somebody said that's 100. So y'all feel me. You know what I mean? I want to. And some of us was already here in America. I just want to say that, too. That part. Yeah. A lot of us was, were Native Americans, and they don't, want to, they don't want you to know that. But, you know, that's a whole other topic. Shit. The last person got to be somebody great, man. The last person got. I know it's somebody I'm missing. You got one more. Yeah, you got one more. Am I thinking? I'm, going I'm sorry, what? I, I want to talk to Adam and Eve. <laughs> I want to like, talk to one of them. I want to know what's going on. I want to know the other people in the garden. Who else was in there? There were some other people in there. I'm going to tell you something, Miss Carol. Go ahead. I saw there uh, uh, when I stole this question from on All the Smoke with Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. You topped all of their answers. <laughs> and I was and watched them as a fan, but you said some of the illest and realest. Woo! That's what I want, man. Mm. If you read Genesis, it seemed like some other people were there. I just want to know. I want to know what was going on. You know, God said he was hiding stuff from us that we didn't really even know about. And after they bit that apple, I mean, I just want to know what the hell they were thinking because they fucked stuff up. Oh, it seemed like we was, we was going to know. We could have been butt naked and eat fruit. I just want to know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this part. I don't like to get uh, uh, too religion, religified. No, religion, I feel you. But that was deep, yo. <laughs> that was deep. Put it this way, if you don't believe in Adam and Eve, I want to talk to the first man because e either way, somebody fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I, I I I hope we can get this to Matt Bonds and them, and they can be like, "Yo, that was the endless five guests." At the, that was. I'm just telling you, I watched that show, and I've heard them say, you know, several people. And I've heard some people m mention Malcolm X, and you've mentioned some. You've mentioned all of the most endless. Including, God bless your um your loved one, your your person, right. um you know because a lot of people say things that that are globally known, global na known names. Um, wow, yo, you hard as shit, yo. That's why you got Katie here, baby. <laughs> and you know I've been around Stephen Jackson. He used to be one of my coworkers too. So okay, not not to be, not to be no name dropper. It ain't, it ain't like we best friends or nothing. <laughs> but I'm gonna. Ask but I'm, I'm just gonna say, say you saying that I'm gonna ask you this then, um, you know, and I I don't like to be on no messy shit personally. I really don't. I don't. This one thing I do my best not to do on mm -hmm. both the the bullshit, and even if somebody say something, but whatever. But what was your personal impression with Stephen Jackson with any interaction you had with him since you brought it up? 
Because right now he riding, he riding for what he called his twin. And his twin moved the world. Right. And they look so much alike, man. That's crazy to me. Um, you know, I you know, the one good interaction I did have with him when we talk about authentic, you know, uh I could tell he was a real dude, you know, educated, a little street. Um and we was actually talking about music, to be honest with you. Cause he and, might I think, and I think and we might have been talking about Nipsey Hustle, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, that's crazy, right? I mean and I'm gonna say this. Steven Jackson rap. He got music. Yeah. So you know, I'm like, you know, whatever. Yeah, he he's with he he is he is hip hop. Right. Know? So I'm sure there's a there's a um a direct uh a love for the culture that we embody each and every day when we wake up and and step outside. So you know. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But oh, no, it's all good. It just in that conversation, he was just telling me about his nickname, Stacks. I think he used that for Instagram. Okay. And um, just telling me about, you know, how they recognize him in the neighborhood. But, you know, I'm just blessed because it's just amazing. I feel like God be, even if I don't know people deep, like he put me around situations where I can say I was a part of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody can't say they bump shows with this person or they bump shows with that person. And so I, I thank God for that, you know? Well, I mean, they say on, on their show, All the Smoke, they the real ones. And, you know, we know what he did when 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 his teammates were attacked, he was with it. You know what I mean? Right. Camaraderie, you know? And aside from that, um, even though what he's doing today, mm -hmm. very moment, um, riding for who he calls his twin, his brother, rest in power, George Floyd, because... He moved the world, all 50 states, several other countries. Um, and and, and as, as terrible, I don't even know I'm going to say terrible, as crazy as it is for this whole quarantine between, between this um, pandemic to happen and that death to be displayed and people have been sitting in their house for months um, because that was a murder. And right. he is a person of notoriety. And that's who somebody he calls his twin. Well, hey man, I gotta you he has to he use his platform up to me the best he can to hey, we ain't gonna win, we're not gonna be silent about it. And the streets said mm -hmm. we ain't silent about it either. You know, this I mean a lot of people said it's a bad year. You see the meme saying, Oh, what's next? But really it's been a good year for black people. Uh, to wake up. I mean, it's still some people that sleep. I mean, I don't know they they comatose, but a lot of black people who have been silent in the past are starting to talk. And I love for my people to wake up because we're black, we're beautiful. Yes. And I've been waiting on this my whole life. You talking oh. about somebody who I was called an activist when I was at, look at Shania Boomerke. Look at her. WNBA Bang. player. She joined us. I appreciate you, girl. Um, Man, but Bang. Right, so I'm just happy to see us wake up, dog. I mean, Trump and everything he's talking about is making people realize that people are racist out here. I mean, I used to be the only one saying, do y'all not see what these people are doing? Do you not see the injustice? And people be like, Kara, be quiet. It's just Kara talking. Now they're starting to see this stuff is real. Systematic racism is real. White supremacy is real. That doesn't mean you hate people. It means that you're starting to see what's going on. They're controlling everything from our school system to oh. police to yeah. entertainment yes. to housing to religion. I had to explain to somebody in uh, elementary school that Egyptians, some of the Egyptians were black, and they just couldn't believe it. Like, <clears throat> We got to teach our kids at home. If you ain't teaching your kids, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and this year was homeschool year. Yeah. <laughs> so what better opportunity, as you're saying, this was a great year for us as people. Yes. Woo! Absolutely. I'm telling you, it's some people, they starting to learn their kids because they ain't got no choice. And I believe 
quarantine is one of the reasons people started to wake up because they got time to think. Mm. They got time to see this black man being um, abused. Mm. They got time to say that shit ain't right. Because why did it take George Floyd? They've been kicking our ass forever. Why did it take George Floyd for these people to wake up? I'm going to say something that is going to, um, um, what's the word? Sound cliche? I got time today, cuz. Right. Like, these, black, these black folks had time. They had time to think. And I'm that money be- running short, that unemployment good for some folk, but that money running short. Go ahead, my bad, brother. <laughs> you good? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this part. Um, you know, Besides having time. Right. You know, um, shit, it just jumped out of my mind. Hold up. Besides having time, um, they are, I'm going to tell you, these white people ain't with that shit. There's a good number of white people, brown people, other color. White people like, yo, we ain't with that racism shit. Now, I will say a lot of white people have come out you know, I've had white people hit me personally in my DM. I don't know why people hit me up, but I mean, I appreciate it. They hit me up. They say sorry. They say I'm standing with you. They say I didn't know this happened. They say I didn't know about Tulsa. They say I didn't know this. And I just can't believe it. Because I thought time. this was in denial, but I just, some of them act like they really didn't know. Because they got time. They <laughs> <laughs> We're not caught up in all of the 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 the, the um, rat race of right uh, bullshit that how they have us work move 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 pay bills da, 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 all that bullshit we all sitting still so, right you know the people that are of the same ethnicity that um are from the same ethnicity as the systematic racism is based on is like no nah, yo <laughs> we ain't we ain't with that like fuck that. That shit is and not- I have to say, man, I'm so proud of the next generation because, I mean, I'm, I'm not that old, but I'm just saying, like, even people younger than me, they out there and they using their voice, they're speaking, and uh, it's really good to see. Yeah, it's really good to see. Yes, absolutely. My all my children are 18 years and older. Mm-hmm. And outside with them now, I know their peers and their constituents and so on and so forth. Yeah, the streets. I, I, I watched the Dave Chappelle 846, and he said, I ain't got to say shit. The streets are speaking. I ain't right. Motherfucking thing. The streets are speaking. You know and let I mean? me get on that, man. I had to get in an argument online with somebody. I probably shouldn't bring it up, but I, I'm, getting, I'm getting comfortable on this live now, baby. I'm getting comfortable, boy. I'm, getting, I'm feeling at home. It's been a lot of people trying to hijack the Black Lives Matter movement. And you see, I be posting stuff all the time. Sometimes I don't get a lot of likes, but I know people watching it because people be trolling me. People be sending me private DMs coming at me. Y'all ain't hurting my feelings. You got to stay up all night to hurt KD feelings, baby. I'm too black. I'm too proud. You can't hurt my feelings. Not about some shit like that. To that point, I had, uh, I've never had this happen before, but on Juneteenth, yeah, I, I posted a picture of a black man with a rifle and I want to say three white white dudes and, and chains and, and shit like they was in slavery. Say, what would you feel? I had some Trump motherfucker jumping my shit. I've never had, I've been had doing this shit for two years. I've never had a Trump motherfucker jumping my shit. And when I start talking, I was like, yo, you know what? I don't do this back and forth because if you know me on my online, I try to stay positive. But if it's going to be that, I'm going to catch you outside. All right. <laughs> Straight up. Like, I'm not doing this if I can't actually physically encounter you. Um, But whatever the fuck, you know. Um, We moving. We progressing. It, to me, it's a paradigm shift. There was a paradigm shift happening. The universe is turning upside down. It's wonderful. I don't give a fuck if the aliens come on 4th of July, nigga. Like um, <laughs> Will Smith and the motherfucker. Right. But, um, Beam me up, guy. Beam me up. <laughs> all right. I, 
I still got some other hip hop questions for you. We, you know, we, we just got. My three. man, I'm I'm going all over. You start talking that race shit, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I know, I, but because this is look, I, I I see your your message and I fully agree with it. Um, I I really do. I just you know like like I said, I'm mixed, but I know how I'm seen. If somebody want to watch the other live, I can tell you my perspective on that and why why I say that. But um, okay, back on some hip hop shit. Who are your top? You want a five or ten MCs? Which one? Five or ten? Either way. To be honest with you, I don't do those. Okay. I don't do. You know what? I, I like reading other people's lists, and I may get mad at them, but it's hard for me to sit down and say this person's one, this person two, because I feel like people are one at different times. I'm gonna ask you this. Okay. Fair enough, right? Okay. Fair enough. But just today, just today. <laughs> Just today, because I I named my favorite five albums at one time on somebody's show, and he was like, well, "I thought you was gonna name some." I said, "I would have." I said, "But today you asked me, and today this is how the fuck I fit." Well, <laughs> you give me yours, and maybe it can spark something off of me. Let me let me. You mean just artists who are doing it hot right now? Period. It don't matter because I know it, it goes like almost generationally. I would even say regionally. But if you are my top ten, I'm gonna give you my top ten. I was gonna make a whole episode about it, but fuck it. I hear I go, and no. it goes. I shit goes in chronological order as best as oh, I can. Okay. Hear me out. Okay. Number one is Grandmaster Cass. Okay. If y'all know who Grandmaster Cass is, you better do your motherfucking research. I respect you went old school because they be forgotten about. Mm -hmm. Number two for me, Ice Cube. Okay, I love Ice Cube. And see, a lot of this comes into regionality in my my top ten. Number three is Rakim. Ooh, can't go wrong. Number four, Scarface. Okay, I've heard a lot of people saying he's up there too. Now, I'm going to say this. I'm not a big Scarface fan. But I know what he has done for the South. And I do know he's dope as shit. Like, See, the same for me. I had my friend Sean, I keep talking about. He says he's like a big one up top. You know, I had to go and listen to his music too. Because growing up, I didn't really listen to his music. I had to go back as well. And he's a storyteller. Yep. You know, yeah. I, I listen. I listen to, to, to Scarface coming up, but I'm saying like in totality of all his albums, I don't have them all. Like I would have. No, I got them. you. Not all the Nas albums, or all the DMX albums, or, or you know. But that was well, that number four, Scarface. Number five for me is Tupac. Okay. Number six, I believe. I made a list. Hold on. Number six. Shit. I want to say it was Andre 3000. Okay. They love him. His influence in Atlanta and down the South is, is, is people still wish he would make more music than that. You know. Right. Um, number seven, I'm going to give to Jay-Z. Okay. Got, got to put him somewhere. <laughs> I mean, like I said, mine is in chronological order. So this is from the 70s all the way till now, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Number seven is Jay-Z. Number eight, uh, who the fuck did I give number eight to? E-40. Hmm. I'm not a fan of E-40. But he got major respect. Talk about E-40 and go to Obi and get your ass whooped. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> I've I've only bought maybe two or three E forty albums. Right. In my in my living. But his dynamic his, his, he's so dynamic. Um yeah, shout out to everybody that's here, you know. Thank y'all for, for joining. Right. But E forty he's so dynamic, even till this day. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time. <laughs> And as I said, regionally, a lot of this to me is regional. You know, a lot of these are, are, are regional pioneers. Because without them, there is no whoever else right now. Um, E-40, what's it, number eight? Number nine is Lauren Hill. Ooh. Now, I always argue with people about Lauren Hill, and they be like, well, she only had one rap album. I don't give a damn. So let me tell you something. That one little rap album... Ooh. <laughs> 
Do you know how hard it is to make a record like that? Her whole album was crazy. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. She ain't got to never make another one. She, no. she going to be on my top no matter where. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Masterpiece. And I right. have a couple other females, uh, female MCs I named before her, but that one particular album puts Fire. her puts her right there with any who anybody. Um, right. And number ten, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Um, and I, I say all of this, and I'm gonna be very specific and be very honest and real about all of this. Okay. Hey, Several honorable mentions. Yeah, I, sh I could have had Nas in there. I could have had a Cool G rap. I could have had a Big Pun, a Big Big e. Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Could have had a Busta Rhymes. I could even possibly have a Rick Ross. But whatever. Um, you know, for what hip hop is actually about, where it came from, and what the fuck it represents, and what's most important to the culture, to me, these are the 10 most important MCs to hip hop culture. In my opinion, you know, there's there are other, other ones right now that are still growing that are paving their way for this new generation and they don't know it. Cool. But for me, a person that has been listening to hip hop since sucker MCs. <laughs> How do you feel I, about uh, Big Crit? I love Big Crit. Honorable mention. Honorable, I knew you were going to say honorable mention. <laughs> honorable mention. Okay. He, to me, he is David Banner. Like, here's David Banner's, like, cousin or son or something. Like, David Banner, right. but Crit take that shit just a little bit further. But you know what? David Banner, he put out some music. I don't know that recent, but I went and listened to that shit, and he rap a lot better than I thought. Like, he be spitting oh. some shit now. Oh, no, David Banner, bad, yeah. bad motherfucker. Right. Is, is, ooh, he's so cold, but and his right. well presence and what he, what he make his brand represent. He does that better than Crit at this point, because I think he he, he must have figured something out. I don't know if he's older, whatever, the, whatever it is. Even but, though he said some wild shit, he, a person that people forget about, and I'm not talking about on the top list, but I just gotta give him some respect. Even though he's a knucklehead, is Pastor Troy, because Pastor Troy held the South down for a long ass time. You couldn't play Pastor Troy when I was in high school without that mug going crazy. Hey, I'm saying that right. Hey, so much. <laughs> And yeah. Rashida too. Rashida, I mean, she's not a big, okay. big name, but back in the day, underground, Rashida and Pastor Troy, they was on some shit. Now, I will say this about Rashida. I, I, I know a little bit, but I'm unfamiliar. You know, I'm forgive me. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, you know, I have to. You know, it, it's man, the talent pool is so wonderful. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, with hip hop, and this is why I talk about preference. Like, what is your favorite today? Because Look, I could tell you my favorite. I could name, is it one, two? Uh, I got three, four. I got four albums right here. I could say these four albums behind me are my favorites, but and I could name another one, but they're all classics. Well, and now you got me thinking because I cannot make a top ten. I can tell you people I like, people that get me crunk, excited, like um, shit. I grew up with Three Cents Mafia. My brother introduced me to them. And just you talking about some people that are just make you tear out the room. And, like, and I would say that created a whole nother hardcore energy. rap. From down south. Yeah. yeah. A horrorcore. What they call it? I, I don't know if it's called horrorcore or it's called something they came up with. Well, I, I would consider them the, probably possibly the first ones of that of what you want to call crunk. To me, like they was did that first. In my well, opinion. we can't forget Master P then if we're gonna go there. I just, I just didn't want to bring him in, but no, I mean, you... I mean, he like the Godfather, so we gotta bring him in. Yes, Master P is in the line of of Jay Prince, um, of uh, Tony Draper. If we want to talk about down south. I would even say Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine Dupri, was right? Polish, but regardless, they are all black men, and you know what I mean. Um, pro pro providing opportunities for other black artists from down south, you know, when um, I guess New York and even possibly the West Coast was kind of like, no, nah, this all's and you know, y'all niggas. That... No, the South got what, what Dre say. The South got something to say. 
Right. Okay. Let me because the reason I brought up Three Six Mafia is because I gotta give a shout out to the chat and Gangsta Boo. Oh. Cause they inspired me. Like when I heard Gangsta Boo spitting on that Tata Club up and all that stuff, and um, who run it? Who run it? What? Yep. <laughs> yep. And riding in the car, the hot sun blazing on you, you you know, you riding down the Georgia streets, that that shit come on, you got your black and mild, man. It just put you <laughs> in a whole put you in a whole nother zone. I'm trying to tell you something, man. So respect to them because sometimes they get left out. Oh, this has been so wonderful. This has been so wonderful. Um I don't know what else to ask you at this point. But anything else you want to say, because I'm I'm you know. It's been a great I mean, time. I, I know I don't have so much fun talking to you, man. I'm just trying to give my respect to everybody. And just on the race stuff, I like to say, you know, I love everybody. And um, sometimes I tell people, you ain't got to say you love everybody. That should just be obvious because just because black people fighting for their rights uh, doesn't mean we hate anybody else. And it, it's annoying to me that we constantly have to say that. Like, oh, I love everybody. Like, duh, we love everybody. We just want our rights. We want people to stop looking at us like we're animals. You know what I mean? Like, my grandmother used to work for 25 cents a day. I come from people who were sharecroppers. What people up, who worked hard. People who were told, you can't drink here. You can't sit here. We won't serve you. My grandfather had to say, sir, to a, a little white boy, and he's a grown-ass man. You right. know what I mean? Shit like that. So it's like, if I don't use my voice, how can I complain when well, my ancestors have been through so much? I have no fear. Like Paul Mooney said, some of us just not born with fear. Like, I'm not born that I'm going to continue to speak, continue to uplift my people. Would I like for it to be kumbaya? I would love for it to be kumbaya, but it's not like that. No. Not we got to fix this issue first. We got to make sure our children understand what white supremacy is. Please read and research Dr. Francis Kressling on YouTube. Read a book, the ISIS papers. Do whatever you got to do. Research. Read these black authors. Educate yourself. If I can leave people with anything, I want to leave you with self-education. Right. I'm so passionate about it because that's what we need to be doing. You are absolutely 1 million percent right. And I, I, I agree with you. I read the ISIS papers. It was a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I'm mixed. I was like, oh, okay. Open my mind up. Right. You start asking questions. Made me start doing research. Made me, you know, to your point. Um, but that's real. And, and thank you for saying that because you have no choice but to educate yourself. You can't blame it on anybody else because we're we're in a position now you can Google everything. If you don't believe Google tell the truth, Google it, then research it yourself on something else. Go to the library, pick up encyclopedia. They still have those. Yep. If you don't believe that, then read an author. Go ask somebody who's older. Fact check. Do whatever you need to do to get information because it's out there. The truth never dies. They try to hide the truth. But it's still out there, baby. And when you know your your work as a black person, it, it changes you. Things just start happening because you realize the power of your ancestors. And you keep that with you. That's what I want to tell everybody out there, for real. And we're from some of the strongest survivors on Ooh. planet ever. All ever. right. Ever. Yeah. Um. Oh, shit, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know. Well, make sure make sure y'all subscribe to both of our YouTube's. Thank you. Hip hop biggest fan, care dangerous. Yes. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, do that. If you're not following me on YouTube, do that. Um, just let's just keep uplifting each other, man. And we'll do this again. You know what I'm saying? I'm down. I'm, I absolutely. I'm with it. I'm with it. And now you know. Like I said, I you know, I normally like to do this face to face, but I've listened to your your, your music before. But I've been seeing what um the messages you've been conveying, you right? Know, what's going on? And I said, you know, I have to talk to this queen, like immediately. 
Um, because everybody don't have the courage to do it. Do you get, that's why they call me Care Dangerous. Do you get it now? <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. Right. You did. Um, happy Father's Day, everybody. All right, yeah. Happy Happy Father's Day. Um, man. I, I, I think that's it. I don't have nothing else, sweetheart. I ain't gonna lie, miss. <laughs> well, we good now. I appreciate everybody tuning in, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank everybody, you know, for coming by, saying what's happening, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And enjoy your lobsters that you got for sale. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I got to, my, my recipe is so simple, but they're so, they're, they're so immaculate, but, you know. Well, you should put it on your Instagram story. We'll we'll take a look. I don't know. You know I, I don't know. I, I'll be feeling like it's my my uh, ancient Chinese secret. Oh, come on, man. I don't know, but I could. I, I say it right now. I'm gonna tell you what it is. All right, take a lobster tail, right? Cut it down the middle, bust the shell up. You pull it, pull the meat out. You clean the meat out, right? Clean the uh, the vein, whatever you want to call it. Okay, however many you have. If you have a Pyrex or a pan. Mm hmm. You cut the oven on about 425. Mm -hmm. Okay. You put white wine at the bottom of the pan or the pot race to, to cre create the steaming effect. Now you season the lobster tail in the top and the bottom with old bay. Season it well. Then you take slices of butter, you sit them. Between the shell, because you want to sit the meat on top of the shell. You sit the butter in between the shell and the meat when you first put mm -hmm. it in. All right? I'm putting this down. Halfway through the cooking process, you, you pull it out. You take a lemon, a real lemon, cut it in half. You squeeze the lemon on top of it. Wow, good. Okay. Put it back in the oven for another couple minutes. By this time... The shell is going to turn uh, uh, orange, red, whatever the hell it is you want to call it. The meat going to start doing the same. Pull it back out. You put butter on top of the actual lobster, on top of it, mm -hmm. top of the meat. Put it back in the oven. Now, this is my thing. They tell you, you know, they tell you put a, a, a thermometer in the, the thickest part of the meat. I don't do that. I need one for the chef to taste. So I pull the lobster tail back out, one that I can check. I bite in the biggest part of there to see if the bite is right. I, I, right. I, that's We I, all do that. We all do that. <laughs> I, I don't, might not eat it. I have to see if, if it's the correct, if it's undercooked, overcooked. You know, depending upon where it's at, I might pull it out or I might put it back in there for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Now, you see so how I'm acting like I'm interested, but I don't even eat lobster like that, dog. It's okay. They was on sale. It was five ninety nine. Sounds good though. Sounds good though. <laughs> so give me six something. Five ninety nine. Shit. You know, but I eat all kind of things. I, I've, been, I've been trying to get away from the bullshit, but you know, I can't help it. The, they they had the bullshit cheap. That's why they they feed they feed us the bullshit for cheap. So you know how that go. And that's why we have a garden. Right. Thank God, though, know, I live in, like, a Latino community, so they have fresh produce. So shout out to all my Latino people because they, they do keep some fresh food out for you. So you just got to peek through the fruit, and I'm good to go. I ain't trying to pinpoint you. Are you in Harlem? I ain't, I ain't trying to give out location. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Forgive not me. because of you, not because of you, but I got some crazies out no, there. I, I, don't, I don't doubt it, so forgive me. Forgive but in case they didn't see the beginning of the video, I'm protected, though. Talk about it. Guns out, sun's out. I don't know. Right. <laughs> well, we ain't gonna say we got no guns, but we got protection. Okay. You, you can think about that all you want. Well, well, shout out to my Dominicans, my Puerto Ricans, my Trinidadians, you know. Um yeah, what, what up? Yeah, all my all my Latinos, you know. Um big love. When I want to lie to somebody, I tell them I'm Puerto Rican. That's just what I want to lie. <laughs> I can see, I can see you getting away with that. They be trying yeah. to talk to me in Spanish sometimes. It'd be fun. I'd be like, uh, no, English, English. <laughs> no, Espanol, no, Espanol. They'd be laughing. They're like, this country-ass girl, she ain't Puerto Rican. Right, right. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. 
It's been a great time, um, great conversation. Thank um, you. Thank you so much. Um, the most wonderful, su supreme success to you in the future and your family. Um, and we'll be in touch. You as well, brother. Yes, ma'am. All right. We out here. Peace. Peace.